Hey guys, the results of this um, <clears throat> spy car, they, they didn't work. <sighs> so basically, I have, I've had it on for a week, this hairpiece. Um, I put the perimeter glue around there, that was good, okay. But then the front started to lift a little bit here. The front's always the bit that lifts. I've got fairly long hair down to my eyes, so any kind of doing of that, you know, it sort of lifts a little bit, right? But with with lace, you could run your finger underneath after you've lifted it and it wouldn't be really wet. Even though you've got glue smothering over it, the lace still allows some kind of evaporation or cooling to occur that allows the sweat to go through and, and allows it to breathe. I've been trying to figure out how glue works. It's still mechanically or, or chemically um, explained through tiny molecules on imperfections gripping into the undulations, the topography of the surface. Skin is not smooth like glass, but it's, it's pretty smooth. So it's hard to make things grip in very tightly. This is just summary. I was going to try to throw in some edits of some videos I've been watching um, of how glue works on a molecular level. There are two types of bonding, mechanical, in the way you would envisage Velcro, just hooks and loops, right? Um, and then there's chemical bonding, where I suppose the uh, electrons from the atoms um, are shared between, in my case, it would have to be skin atoms and glue atoms. I don't think that's what's happening here. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, there, there are double epoxy kind of layers where you glue on one side, glue on the other. It's like peanut butter sandwiches, right? You can put peanut butter on one side of the bread, get another blank piece of bread, put it on, and then it will fall off, right? But if you put peanut butter on this bread, slice of bread, then put peanut butter on this side of the slice of bread and then stick them together, they'll stay together because the glue from there and the, there have both stuck together. They've cohes cohesed, okay? So glue sticking to itself is cohesion and glue sticking to another surface that's not the glue is adhesion. So this is an adhesive and in amongst the um, molecules of the glue itself, the glue molecules are cohes cohesing together. So when I sweat, um, it's, it's ruining that, that connection. The surface remains tacky on these sort of glues that I'm using, like uh, this acrylic glue, Dablin Green or Walker Tape Ultra Hold. They're both uh, acrylic glues. They're also water-based glues, which I don't use because they're messy and they don't have very much stick at all, as far as I'm concerned. They're also silicon glues, like uh, Walker Tape Extreme Hold, which I had very problematic results with because the moment it lifts, which is great because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, remain wet. It dries like hardened plastic. And then on the first instance you push it down it'll stay the, because it will grip in over a certain amount of time it will go into the pores and then just grip in there but the moment it lifts slightly you can't push it back down it's it's just plastic and it will not stick ever again for some reason i don't understand how that works even, i even try to paint a little bit of alcohol to dissolve the silicon glue because silicon glue did seem like a very amazing, I was really amazed at how dry it was. It didn't seem like it was going to melt and therefore it wouldn't ever become um, unstuck. But it did, it did become unstuck. And even super glue, a hard bond. Um, I think it's cyano um, acylate or something. I don't remember what it's called, but that hardens rock hard, right? Even when it's sort of wet, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, and you can just peel it right off. You can't stick it back down though. 
There are epoxy glues that come in two portions and you put one on one side and one on the other and when they blend together they have a chemical bond with each other. The thing is we're still having the problem of the adhesion to the poly hairpiece base and then on the other side the adhesion to the skin itself. Once you disconnect from either of those two things and it's usually the skin that it disconnects from not the poly. Um, I would say that the polys must, must, be, must be more porous or have more undulations than skin or there's more moisture coming from the skin side and therefore this is the side that lifts disconnects more. If, if it was the poly side that was um, disconnecting and the glue was staying on the scalp, um, I wouldn't come to that conclusion. But my conclusion is, this is the side that's wet and it's probably hotter on this side than on this side as well. So that would answer the question about why does the glue remain stuck to the poly instead of the scalp in nearly every case. So we've, we've got a problem here with the actual chemical makeup of how glue actually works. How do we solve this? Well, basically, you can get sandpaper and scrub down the scalp. would give you more of a corrugation and more topography, more places for the glue to mechanically grip in to your scalp. But given that the scalp is a slippery, fairly smooth surface, yeah, there's not much you can do about that. You need some of the, because glue still isn't fully understood by science, from what I've seen. It's not fully understood how it actually works on a molecular level and how to get it to stick with heat and, and moisture. There are certain glues that could do that. I mean, obviously, there are engine components that are stuck together with glue that's very hot and very wet as well and they seem to withstand it. I don't think that would be good to stick on your skin though. I was looking at Dermabond, $79.95 for 0.5 millilitres. This tiny little bottle here, oh, fucking fluid ounces, 0 0.5 fluid ounces, all right, but I'd say that's about 30 millilitres, okay? Now, the tube that you get for $79.95, the doctors can use to, you know, instead of sutras if you cut your face in a place that isn't going to be stretched and moved around. So you would do it there on the outside, that little pinky finger there. But if it's on this interior of that part where you're going to be touching and stuff all the time, you could probably break it apart. They don't want you to put these Dermabond um, top, skin topical glues on parts of your body that are going to be moved around. This doesn't really move around up here, right? So it would probably be okay for that. But at $79.95 for 0.5 of a milliliter, that's one little injection tube, done. You definitely wouldn't cover this whole thing. You might get that much of the front hairline. That's it, all gone. I can't even tell you that it will work that well, but that's crazy, you can't spend that sort of money. This bottle here was $9.50. American with the hundred dollar delivery fee for me in Australia. So I had to buy six of them to justify buying it at all. But compared to Walker Tape Ultra Hold, it is a thinner, runnier glue, which requires a thinner layer of glue. Um, just by design, it won't create lumps or anything. Which Ultra Hold is thick and clumpy and mozzarella, so when it dries, it, it can have big lumps. Not as bad as Walker Tape Extreme, which is the silicon glue I was talking about. And there's another guy on, in the comment section who's talking about, uh, I think it's called Sunshine Silicon Glue, which is quite expensive. Not expensive as what we were just talking about with the Dermabond, but that's also silicon glue. I'd say you'd have to be pretty careful. You'd have to not move it. The other solution really is to stop having any leverage at all along the front hairline. I'm not talking about, okay, there are two issues I'm talking about. One is does this spiker let enough air in to allow for the evaporation and heat venting to prevent sweat buildup underneath your hairpiece? No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No good. 
That doesn't mean to say that I wouldn't say something that creates bigger holes than that would work because lace works, doesn't it? Lace allows head event. So why don't I just buy lace then if I want holes? Why don't I just use lace? Lace has holes that are so big that it allows the glue to shine through. You can't glue onto it and it's a pain in the ass to clean. If you were gonna use lace one time only and then throw it away, potentially you could use some kind of glue that doesn't have any shine to it whatsoever. Like for example, I would say that silicon glue, even extreme hold, which is, I'll tell you what, that stuff, if you do not lay it down thin, let me give you, show you the bottle. Yeah. You can even see the way the glue sticks to things in this example. Okay, see how that's very much like plastic? It's still a bit sticky though. That's quite a big chunk. I don't know why it decided to ooze out. Maybe it was on its side and it just ripped out. It's not all hardened inside, that's good. There's still some. That was $65 for this bottle, not including any delivery fees. That stuff creates massive chunks on your head that uh, uh, you, can, you, can, you can actually feel the lump of the glue. The thing is, once it's become wet from sweat or any other thing, if it's lifted here just because of the leverage of you just brushing your hair, it won't stick back down. When I tried spraying alcohol on it and pushing it back down, it just didn't re-stick. Right now, I've just reapplied some of this glue over the top of the front section here of the previous glue, which is not ideal. I should have probably peeled off the previous glue, but I just couldn't be bothered. I've only had it on for one week and I don't want to have to do that. However, with lace, it would have just been a complete mess if I didn't remove that glue first. By picking, 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 spending half an hour in front of the mirror, fuck, I'm exhausted, right? So I just put this extra layer on. So. It's cohesing with itself, and I'm hoping it will, will adhere to my skin here just as well as it did the first time I put it on. And because it's only a thin layer, adding an extra layer of this, a second layer now, after a week, um, it doesn't seem like that would cause any harm. Because Walker Tape Ultra Hold is probably three times as thick as a thin layer of this. So Walker Tape Ultra Hold would be three times as thick, then you wait a week and it peels back at the front. You don't peel it off because you're lazy like I have been today. Then you put another layer of Walker Tape Ultra Hold at the top. That's now six times the thickness of this glue. You're starting to get to the thickness of tape, which is nobody uses tape on the front hairline. People use tape on the back and perimeter where they know they're not going to have any leverage and you know it's easier to place down and stuff like that. But tape along the front... I mean, for a start off, tape is not easy to cut. It sticks to your scissors when you're trying to cut the tape as well. Tape is a pain. Tape is harder and more takes more effort to apply tape than to just glue with a brush onto the hairpiece. I don't really know why people use tape unless they're not aiming for the edges. They're just going generally left, you know, because they, they come in rectangles or you know, specific shapes, A, C, B, whatever the bend is, right? But that's never gonna fit exactly to the contours of your particular stencil. So you're gonna have to adjust it or add more layers of it. And so you got tape that's that thick and then you might need to overlap them a bit here so that there's no gap there, right? So you need to, to put them exact. You won't be able to. The moment you put that tape down and you start lifting it, it's gonna pull this other tape off with it. So you're gonna have all these messy fucking tape from all your fucking, fucking hate tape, right? That's what will happen if tape. It happens with tape. Lou has less problems. I mean, the base of this poly is basically effectively the same as one of the sides of tape. And obviously with two-sided tape, which is what you'd be using, you got that on both sides. And it's, it's messy. You might as well just put glue onto this. Then you just peel it off afterwards. No harder to remove than tape. No mess yet, because poly is easy to peel things off from, unless it's silicon. So my search for the ultimate glue does continue, but not 
I'm not going to be experimenting with some 0 0.5 milligrams of fuck or milliliters of milligrams doesn't matter it's liquid same thing it's not going to weigh any more than water all right be milligrams of dermabond the most expensive glue i've ever seen might not be the most expensive glue in the world but crushed up diamonds made into a paste that sticks to things would probably be worth a bit more but that's pretty close to diamonds so this is just gonna have to keep going on and on and on i'd say then therefore it's springtime it's not summer it's not hot hot 20 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. There is no problem with temperature. I'm very comfortable almost in my surrounds with the skin. Temperature as it is. Okay. So the spiker did not create holes that were sufficiently sized to allow the venting and so on. I don't think you have to go as big as the holes you have in lace. So much so that the glue's coming out and oozing out through the gaps when it's hot in summer and melts. Um, and it makes it harder to clean. It makes this whole thing perforated or whatever. Um, but some kind of holes in the poly would be beneficial. So, I still prefer poly. There is the whole subject of why not get a poly perimeter with a lace center. The thing is, I don't understand how you can get one of those hair pieces that is not custom made. And being custom made, I've been waiting now for over a month for my my custom order. I don't know how long it's going to take. I've ordered four pieces, and they said they're going to send me one of them so I can test it. What does that mean? It's going to be it's going to take ten months to get me my hair pieces that I custom ordered. Ten months. Do you know what? You understand now I'm taught why I buy stock pieces and I cut them in half? Of course. They're just ready. They get delivered within a week. All right? I can have six of them for about the same price as this custom order. I'll be reviewing that custom order when it arrives. Based on how long it took me to receive it, obviously, major concern. Major concern. It's almost up there with hair quality concern. How long did it take? How much did it cost? What's the quality like? Did they follow my order exactly or did they fuck it up? Of course I'll be answering these questions. As for now, this thing had zero effect. I know if it was lace, there would be no wetness underneath there when lifting up the front hairline, which always lifts. But I'll tell you what, trying to do front hairline maintenance on lace is a pain in the ass. There's always a little bit of glue showing all around the front edge there. There's nothing you can do about it. You've got glue shining through the gaps whenever there's an over, overhead light of any kind. So downlights are your enemy. Sunshine is your enemy. Glue hides all that. You can wear a hat with poly. You can wear a, a, a motorcycle helmet with poly. Don't even think about doing those things with lace. The one thing about poly is you can have sweat build up underneath, which nobody can actually see. It doesn't cause any skin irritation. There's no real problem with having that sweat underneath there. And the lifting does not seem to increase overall wearing poly with sweat build up underneath it. So I still prefer poly. Lace still requires the front hairline maintenance all the time, more often than with poly. Even though you've got sweat problem with poly, lace still requires more maintenance than that. So you wouldn't choose lace. I can imagine why you would choose lace around if you had a huge hairpiece. Mine's only small. If you had a really huge hairpiece, poly would offer zero breathability for that entire area. So you would want some kind of holes throughout that distance. In that situation, I would say you need to get poly perimeter with lace in the middle, which seems like the ultimate solution, really, because you, at least it doesn't matter about the perimeter back here and so on. It would be nice, though, for you as well if you do have the perimeter because then you can have easy cleanup around all the edges. But realistically speaking, I, I would say you want to get a stock piece for the, for the amount of time it takes to get delivered to you. That would take fucking forever to have a custom piece. They've got to 
you're going to show them your exact stencil and they've got to make it with the poly perimeter and then stitch in the lace in the middle. I don't know. All I want really then is a poly at the front and then a lace throughout the rest. But given my hairpiece is quite small, I personally probably don't need to worry about it very much. Because the thing is, I would still probably want to smother over glue all over the rest of this whole area, which defeats the purpose of having partially laced because it's going to get all mucked up and dirty anyway, right? But at least it's not going to get mucked up and dirty here. There would be shine if somebody looked down through those, through, at the scalp from up above, down there through there, if it was lace. And, and I ride a motorbike, so that's going to squeeze the glue through heat it up, melt the glue, and it's going to ooze up into the hairs, and then all throughout here, it's going to have chunks of hair sticking together. So really, despite the breathability of the lace up there, if you wear a hat or if you wear a motorcycle helmet, you should just avoid lace completely. So what is the solution? <sighs> You've got a keep doing maintenance all the time every week every week if you've got poly and you're sweating you could drill you, you saw when I, when I punched holes with this thing right you can see that the thickness of the needles is not negligible it's noticeable and doing that that kind of hurts right away right it does feel like needles but the thing is it, it's gathered either if I did that quickly I just punch that many holes into my hand so my hand would have more breathability um, stop saying do it why are you all chanting do it shut the fuck up for a second I'm trying to teach you something here I feel like I'm gonna get stigmata is that the word you got the crucifix nail coming through your hand just from you thinking and praying that it will happen so, if that had any effect whatsoever, which it should have logically had, right? I can't see the holes, you can't see the holes. Nobody can see the holes, but you saw me make the holes, but they sealed up as tight as your mother's pussy as soon as it was finished. So, why did that reseal so quickly? Just rubbery, rubbery fucking material, the poly. Oh, it's got some stretch to it. It's not like hardened plastic where it just cracks as you push it through. It's rubbery. One of these things with even bigger holes potentially is the way to go. But you'd want to be careful not to push hairs through or anything, which wouldn't happen unless it's got a hook to it. So if it goes in narrow at the very tip and then widens as it comes through, you could get a thicker needle and be stabbing. I don't want to, I mean, you might be thinking, well, why don't you use scissors and go, that seems like really damage the hairpiece. And the holes would be bigger than with lace. And you'd only have isolated breathability in that one little area where the hole was put. Well, then why don't you put them everywhere? Because then you'd rip your fucking hairpiece to shreds. There's got to be something in between this and this that will allow you to get some holes into the poly with it, you know, to increase the breathability and vent the heat so that the sweat doesn't build up. The thing is, even, like I say, even with the lace, there is sufficient sweat underneath the lace at the front hairline that still leads to, well, when leverage is used, lifting issues at the front hairline. Glue simply hasn't been invented that I've heard of. It's cheap enough. It's good enough to hold the front hairline down if you've got a long enough fringe. If your hair's really short or if you wear your hair brushed back at all times, like if you brush it back once, that's not 10 times, I'm saying hold on, once, you brush it back, spray it into position, have a beautiful, beautiful hairline that girls just flick their bean to, right? And then just leave it and you don't touch it. That's not going to have any of that leverage shit happening. Like with 
the fringe that I have. But there's still going to be deterioration of glue, not just from sweat, but from heat and air exposure over those next seven days, I suppose. So every seven days, you really do have to do the front hairline all over again. I really wanted to find a way to not have to do that. Because I'm not just lazy, it's my whole life. I've got to deal with it all the time, right? I don't want to have brushed my I don't want to have to brush my teeth every day. Can't I just brush my teeth once a week and then rinse some of this in my mouth all the rest of the time? Me no. <laughs> you have to brush your teeth every day. So I guess I'm being a bit of a pussy by saying that this needs to work forever. So seven days it is then, it's the best holes you can get in the front hairline. And then every two or three weeks you've got to take off the whole thing and redo the glue. The great thing about poly over lace for that is you can peel it off with lace. You fucking can't. No, I didn't, I didn't call you a fucking cunt. I just, you fucking cannot. You fucking cunt. Right? Anyway, that's, that's dry. Let's go put it down. See if I can make... See, I'm even worried now that it's going to lift even more when I do that. If you've got any solutions for how to do this, should this be my thumbnail? If you've got any solutions to how to do this, solve the problem so that you don't need to put, you don't need to do front hairline maintenance every week or even more often, oftener. Please write it in the comments below. So yeah, you're right. If, if you're going to be putting massive holes throughout the entire poly, you might as well just get lace because that's what lace basically is. It is poly with big holes through it. I just want a nice compromise. And let's not forget, this is horizontal V-loops. I can't get that perfect. And cleaning the glue out of that chunk there. That chunk. You might say, well, you should remove that chunk because it's going too low on your forehead. You need to cut it up to there. See, the problem, the thing is, that's, that's one thing, right? The only reason you can see that chunk is because it's come around over the top. How did it come around over the top? I don't know. Probably, I, I was probably clumsy with the hair, with the glue brush. Because I don't generally push the hairpiece down anymore while it's still wet. Because that causes it to ooze out the gap, out, out the edges. What the fuck have I done over here? It's clumsy. Bad workmanship. So conclusion, I can't give you a conclusion yet, except the fact that these holes are not big enough. Just had to tell you that bit. If they did make a difference, they didn't solve the problem. And like I say, if you choose lace instead of poly, you got more problems to worry about. So I would still stick with poly. Like for example, you cannot wear a helmet or a hat or anything with poly, with lace.
Okay, that's two layers. It's a weak, it's a weak layer, a weak old layer of glue, covered with a ten minute old layer of glue, and it's sticking just fine. So long as it's not dirty, right? That's not dirty there, but it is kind of really dirty right there. This is C22. Don't you love the quality control on their ink? Look how I missed the edge there. Totally missed it. tearing hair piece to pieces here. Yeah, the Victoria Police are becoming fucking crazy at the moment. violent whereas before the uh, lockdowns and everything see Melbourne has a population of about 4.2 million people Victoria I think overall has a population of 5 million that's a state in Australia by the way um, my state Grabbing women by the throat, arresting people for incitement, like by for, for posting a, a protest message on Facebook, asking for people to gather together. Incitement to break what the laws are and stuff, like in terms of social distancing. So that is incitement, apparently. People are being arrested and fined massively for that. I understand we're in a pandemic, but you know when people when society is scared, it's the exact excuse the government needs to tighten the noose on our freedoms. It's happened throughout the whole of history. Show me your papers, right? That's what's happening. I'm gonna do the back of my neck. Use my office chair to make this microphone stand taller. Visibility is not great here. I can barely see things. Oh, no, I can. It's just I'm trying to see it in the camera. You shrunk everything down for me. But I can see the mirror. So if I just look in the mirror.
got fat. I'll tell you what, you can't tell how fat you are until you see your reflection of your own ass in the mirror. You're so used to looking at the front half of you. <laughs> and probably almost posing for yourself so you don't have that double chin when you look in the mirror at yourself. Put the mirror down there and then put it facing another mirror so you can see your own ass. That's when you know when you're fat. I might have to go fucking walk. Obviously, like I've shown you before, my hair will look different when it's dried. And in preparation for that eventuality, which is going to happen. Fuck, I stink. Here's another tip. If you can't be bothered having a shower, just use wipe, baby wipes. Put hot water and soap and stuff. You can't just spread deodorant straight into your smelly armpits. It doesn't work that way. Okay. I had a shower last night. So I'm not having another shower just for that. Much better. It's probably bad for the environment for me to be doing that when I probably could have got a flannel face washer and done it and then washed it and squeezed all the smelly bacteria piss out of it. Now I can put on Links for men. Africa edition. Americans don't say Africa edition, do they? They say Africa edition. Because there's no R in the middle. I was thinking, how would you make... How would you write something so that the Americans would not... put the R sound effect in? Like, if you wanted to say er, after, how would you write that using the alphabet? I know you could use the phonetics symbols but most people wouldn't understand that so if you wanted somebody to pronounce something just say it opened a magical door that would give you the anti-venom that you need to survive you've just been bitten by the snake which they made you sit there in a pit of snakes for punishment inevitably you got bitten and now you've got this sign on the door just read this and it says after you get bitten say Give me the anti-venom. But you have to say it in a proper accent. You can't say after. You've got to say after. After? No. After? Nope. After? Nope. After. After. No. <laughs> I think Americans might be the worst English-speaking country to be able to do anyone else's accent. I've heard people, I've heard Americans able to do it before, but they've really got to concentrate. It's like, do you really use this small amount of muscles in your face when you talk? Yes, we do. In fact, I'm surprised Americans get fat at all, given the amount of calories they must burn while talking. Hey there, Bob. You just burned 10 calories saying that. How are you, Hank? See, it's okay to bash Americans, American bash, as it were, because they're powerful. It's not like they're weak little, you know. They've got everything. They're in the world. Think of me. Boom. <clears throat> smells like a weak old taco. Now look at my ass. Walking, back again. Look now. <sighs> Freckle hiding. Just in case girl walks past and I don't want to see my freckly elbows. It's better for me in everyday life to wear it. Long sleeve. Hey, come on for a swim. Mm, not today. Not today. Rangers do not have great lives. You guys have been watching The Boys? The Boys is awesome. 
I use a, an illegal app for it, but I think it's on Amazon Prime. If you're the sort of person who likes spending money and supporting the industry. An industry I ashamedly betray each time I steal copyright material, which I've avoided doing here today, which I could have easily done, shoving in information for you from Botanica.com on how glues work. Yes, that's right, I need to put something in there. Mark is a bit too dreadlocky, I think now. For what they want, wax seems to cause hair suffocation and sort of makes me feel like I've got eczema after a couple of days, even though I don't wash every day during this fucking pandemic. This stuff seems all right, it's just good on the surface. Makes the hair stick together a bit. What's that called? That's right, cohesion. But the hairs are not actually sticking to themselves, they're sticking to the glue, paste. And the glue is sticking to itself, which is called cohesion. But when the glue sticks to the hair, it's called adhesion, that's correct. All right, molecules, do your stuff. I also find, given that my, I know my hair isn't going to dry straight ever, it's probably better for me and for anyone else with very wavy or curly hair to just use your fingers rather than a brush. Otherwise, it looks like it's brushed in one area and curly in the other. Hand, hand combing, what do you call this process? Or fingernail combing? Tends to lead to a better result, I think. Making allowances for the idea that the hair is going to curl and wave. Whereas a brush is kind of forcing it in certain areas to straighten temporarily while it dries and then fluffs off anyway. But it doesn't fluff evenly over your whole head as a whole. So, I'll be going for a walk to get rid of that fat ass. Why do you have a fat ass? I just want to get liposuction and suck it out. But I've got, to, I've got to work on my core strength from my back as well. So I have to walk down the street. Going completely against what I just told you to do. And this baldness on the back of my head. I don't even know. I, I don't know if it's getting worse. It's just fucking there. Get a full topper. Just shave it, bro. Like I said, this is a sideways fucking ear to ear fucking mistake hairpiece from the pile of misfits. They're not quite right pile. But given there's nothing important that I'm doing on camera, no offense. Um, <laughs> coming up, I'm just going to leave it like this, right? There we go, lose some fat ass. Ass fat. Wait. I better leave looking better than I started. It'll dry better than this one. 